So, it's my pleasure now to introduce um, the first of our guest speakers for this afternoon. I met John Mack, oh that's quite loud, let's stay back here. Um, I met John Mack in 1982 when I was a Year 12 student at the National Mathematics uh, Summer School and I remember that he taught me that every integer is the sum of four squares. And so um, we've had a, a long relationship since then. The other thing he did was he told me what my HSC mark was before it was officially announced. <laughs> which it probably shouldn't have. Been. <laughs> so John is an honorary associate professor in the School of Mathematics and Statistics. He's now retired, but before he was retired, he was professor of mathematics and head of the academic board. Um, he's always been passionate about school mathematics. He uh, has been president of the Australian Association of Maths Teachers. And he became a life member in 1996. He's also a life member of MANSWA, the Mathematical Association of New South Wales. So in 2008, um, John was honoured by um, a Queen's Birthday Honours List where he's a member of the Order of Australia. And uh, that was for service to mathematics education, particularly in the area of curriculum development to the arts and to a range of academic professional organisation. So it's my pleasure to invite um, John Mack to give the first of our guest talks. Thank you. One of the groups I belonged to when I first joined the staff of the university used to meet once a month and it consisted of some rather elderly types like me now and some younger people and the motto of it was that the old might be quickened by the new and I must say that being here today and experiencing this morning's discussion has been a very revitalising experience for me and I hope that those of you who are still on the beginnings of your careers realise there's a great deal to be gained by sharing experiences and learning new things all the time. I think as a teacher, it's important to let your students know that you're also a learner because we're learning all the time and that phrase about lifelong learning is not an empty phrase, it's really important. Now, my topic here are HSC subjects and um, this is far too big a topic to talk about in a finite time, so I'll uh, just speak in some generality, but the important thing is, I think, to remember that the early years of your life are really years when you've got to develop your own abilities to the maximum. And the most important organ in anybody's body is their brain. The brain uses the highest proportion of energy that your body produces. And one of your functions as a teacher is to make sure that you develop the brains of your students to the maximum. And in mathematics, it's a very excellent area in which you can encourage mental development. So I have a very strong belief that being a maths teacher is a really important role in a school, whether you teach other things or not. With regard to the HSC, first thing to remember is that at present, um, not every student entering year 11 has the same sort of choice of subjects as they might were they in a different school. We're still a long way from equity of access that Marilyn mentioned as a really important thing this morning. The next thing is that it is not all that easy, even now with the wealth of information around us, to get an understanding of the sorts of things that will really help you go in that important transition from school to post-school. The HSC is certainly a really important uh, milestone in that. It's been made so in our society. We've increased the participation rate up to the end of year 12 quite significantly in my lifetime and there are plans to make more and more of the cohort of students um, age group uh, complete an HSC. So when you're thinking about advising students on the sorts of courses they might take, start but make sure they're really beginning to think about this in year nine 
because post year nine it's already the case that you may be limiting your opportunities as a student. Don't expect them to take it very seriously. <laughs> year 12 is too far away to worry about if you're in year nine for most people, but it is important to keep stressing the fact that there are some subjects like mathematics which really are very useful for general intellectual development and I would emphasize that. The HSC is something which is in many ways not found easily in other countries. What I really like about it is the wide choice of subjects that are available to students entering year 11 and going on to year 12. Sometimes I find I also dislike it because I think the choice is too wide and maybe students are wittingly or unwittingly making subject choices that in the end they might regret a few years later. Let me just mention briefly, there are about 55,000 students who qualified for an ATAR in recent years. Um, you know how many units you have to do to qualify for an HSC. Most of you know that you can do that by completing five or six courses. We still have, fortunately, a reasonable number of students who do more than the minimum number of courses. But in 30 seconds, how many different subject combinations do you think students <laughs> present for the HSC? Give a little bit of thought for that. 55,000 students. Anyone like to hazard a guess? 10,000. How many HSC courses are there? <laughs> 55,000 students. I have a bit of 10,000. Do I have an advance on 10,000? 10,001. Slide three. <laughs> Thank you. Neville is going to confirm what I'm about to say, and I'm not being terribly precise. There are over 26. 26,000 was it? Certainly over 20,000 different subject combinations presented in the HSC in recent years. <coughs> Students do take advantage of the diversity of choice and you've got to keep that in mind. Now one of the disadvantages of being a maths teacher, especially in the upper years of high school, is that when students in your class say why do I have to do this when no other subject that I'm studying for the HSC appears to require any mathematics? Because that's the case. Um, most of them only require a little bit of primary school mathematics and even the physics course doesn't require much beyond about year eight. Um, I think your answer is, well, I don't know why there is so little mathematics evident in many of the other subjects when if you're going to study those at university, you will find that you need a reasonable body of mathematics to help you get through it. I'm a bit disappointed that our general curriculum is um, really so focused on keeping maths in the maths classroom. I would much prefer to see applications of mathematics appear in the subject area where the application occurs rather than more and more of the demand being put on the maths teacher to include an example of that in your classes. So think globally about the future careers of your students. Think to try to get them to understand that learning and achieving in mathematics is really mentally very important and it's going to open up doors that you may find it hard to struggle through if you defer taking up the serious study of mathematics. It's a really important thing. Um, I recently saw a full double page spread in a well-known magazine called The New Yorker. It was by ExxonMobil, which is a pretty big global company. It had a picture of a young girl head down over an open book with a pencil and up in the top corner it simply said eight out of ten careers in this century will require a knowledge of maths and science. In a country like Australia that's going to be terribly significant because 
mining and agriculture and so on, although they generate a lot of money for us, you don't need many people in those industries these days because of advances in technology. If we're going to get successful employment for a lot of our future workers, they're going to have to be employed in areas where intellectual and creative abilities are paramount. That's one of the challenges that we all face and I hope and I really believe after listening to what was going on this morning that in the front of me are a lot of people who are going to help our students achieve those career goals. Thank you. Thank you.